Hi, Kitty Cats. I am Amethyst Herrick, your hostess for Gender Identity Weekly, a weekly discussion about identity and gender from the contributors and guests of the Purple Pop Publications website, genderidentitytoday.com. This content is brought to you by subscribers of genderidentitytoday.com. If you are already a subscriber, first of all, thank you so much for your ongoing support, because subscribers not only receive new content directly to their inboxes as soon as it publishes, but are also able to interact with every contributor directly, which includes me, and hell, I know I want to send me email. So if you would like to support shows like this one, as well as podcasts, videos, and other written articles by our contributors, please consider subscribing using the links you will find in the show notes. So today I am just ridiculously over the moon, which is why I wore a dress with moons on it, to be speaking with Josephine McCarthy. Hi, Josephine. Hi. It's really good actually to be here. This is, I'm excited too. I will t- I've got butterflies in my stomach uh, still. I- I'm not going to kid you. Um, I'm fangirling everybody, just so you know. Josephine is an esoteric author and director of Quoria, which is a free online magical training course. And um, there's a quick story. I don't know if you'll remember this. When when you were sending out the Mystagogus deck... Um, I got an email and it came to my, to my old name, my old name. Mm. And so I replied to you and I said, listen, I, I'm, I'm transitioning gender. I changed my name. Here it is. Address is the same. And you replied to me and said, I, I, I believe it was welcome to the crazy. You said, first of all, congratulations on your transition and welcome to the crazy world of womanhood. And I thought, oh, I'm going to get emotional. I thought if I, if I got that from Josephine McCarthy, son of a bitch, have I made it? Um, so that was why I was maybe six months later, I reached out to you because I felt, I felt like my energy is changing as a result of gender transition. And then we had this fabulous conversation and it took another, what, six months before I worked up the courage to ask would you like to appear on this podcast? And, and here you are. I'm just fangirling all over the place. It's an honor to be here because this is, this is an area of magic particularly that's never looked at. The whole, you know, it's like in terms of gender, magic is still stuck in the Victorian 19th century. It's about mm. time you fucking grew up. Like, yeah. So. Do we... Before we go too far, can you actually, because because I have an idea of what magic is, but this is because I've studied your course. How would you define magic? Magic for me is learning and what is practical learning, practical learning and development of skills that allow you to commune deeper mm. with everything around you that's conscious, which is virtually everything, and understanding that you're part of a huge pattern um, and and that you're just this tiny part of this complexity and learning to work within that as a useful bead on a string instead of, you know, in, in some magical corners that are all terribly important and dressing robes and wave swords around and wear silly hats. It's like, no, 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 no. No, how do you talk to the wind? You know, how can the oh. wind talk to you? Yeah. That construction of finding an interface and a bridge and working with nature to communicate and to be a part of nature instead of stood to one side of nature and going, oh, well, you know, God made all of you just for my benefit. It's like, what <laughs> wrote that for fuck's sake? Really? So, sorry. Hey. No, 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 no. It's a great point because I do the same. I'm like, how did we end up? Because it went from stewardship, the original Hebrew stewardship, into dominion. And that's a very significant shift. So has magic always been a big part of your life or your your communication with nature and everything around you? Yeah. Yeah. And for the longest time, that didn't connect with it being magic. For me, mm. you know, as an I because that's how I grew up as a kid. My mother used to talk to everything, and oh. um, 
my my dad was uh, he was into the mystical side of Christianity, and okay. so he dragged me around all the abbeys because I was I was the menopause baby, so all the others were all grown up. You know, all my brothers and sisters are in their seventies, sure. um, and you know she kept being told no, it's the menopause, and she's like, no, I can feel it moving, and they're going, no, 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 that's ghost movements, and then I popped out, yeah, and uh, hello. Yeah, so I got to spend a bit more time, where, whereas the others were all piled, there's seven of us, and they just came like one after the other after the other. So I yeah. had parent time more than they did. Um, but, yeah, my mother used to talk to everything, and she'd tell things off, like, you know, Kettle, I put you there and I turned you on. Why are you not working? <laughs> you know? Rather wow. Than, the kettle's not working. You know, she, she'd yeah. really get the kettle. And, um, and my dad would take me around all these sacred sites, not just the Christian ones. You know, we'd go around stone circles and things like that. And sure. it was, I think, back in that, that time as well, um, in Irish culture, you just talk to everything. You know, it's just, just part of it. So, mm. um, yeah, and it, it took me quite a few years to actually make the connection that oh that is also part of magic well actually that's the foundation of what magic is for it's not there to get a nice new car if you want a nice new car get a job or get a better job or don't spend as much money and save it you know that's possible too yeah but, um so no go ahead sorry yeah, and it it was just, you know, when I started working a bit more formally and working in vision and stuff, and it's like, hang on a minute. I know I know what you are, <laughs> you know. I know what you're, when I'm talking to you and you've been given this name, but actually you're this. And it's like, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, why do you call it? I don't call myself that. They do. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm getting it slowly. That's amazing. Oh, it's what's interesting. So you're talking about being driven, uh, however, traveling around Ireland when you were young to see um, mystical sites. But Quaria has far more than Irish or even English hmm. influences on it. I mean, there's a ton of Egyptian influence on it. I know I have your translation of the Book of Gates right well, up there. That you know, for Western magicians, it, it, especially in Britain tend to focus right in on the Arthurian and, you know, the, the British mythos, mm -hmm. which is like small island mentality. If you're training a magician, you need to train them how to learn mm -hmm. um, because a lot of them don't know how to learn, especially magic. And once you come into a subject matter where you've absolutely no reference points, it's like people revert right back. And so you have to teach them you know, the world is bigger than the city you live in. And sure. it's important that they also learn that in, in different cultures and different countries and different histories, the foundations are the same. So if you build really good foundations in the one that you know, you can talk to anything. And that foundation is should be one that's not um, culturally overlaid. And so another important factor of that is that you can then bring in lots of different cultures in and out because you're working from a neutral standpoint. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're not constantly measuring it against a cultural norm. Um, and it's teaching that open-mindedness. Oh, everyone. gosh. Okay. Because I, I mean, I'll admit this, and now that I have you on the – on like the phone, you're going to go, what? No, because I much of of Renaissance magic had, has an Egyptian influence, obviously. I mean, I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but much of Renaissance magic and, you know, you bring in Hermetic Kabbalah. Mm -hmm. And so I, I wondered if maybe that was that was why why some of this was brought in. Let me stop talking. Yeah. I wondered, because now that you're here, you tell me. <laughs> yeah. No, the the reason that I chose, um, there's actually quite a lot of different cultures uh, and magical systems that are looked at and, and worked with. The reason I've used so much Egyptian stuff is that 
the majority of ancient and classical magical systems are not stable. Mm. And the Egyptian one is. And I think that's be- because it was it went on for so long. You've got, you know, three and a half thousand years of stability there. Even as the civilization went up and down, the, the actual religious structure and the magic is part of the religion. It all, in the ancient world, the magic was the m- magic and religion were the same thing. They were an extra sure. Babylonian, um, for example, were the same. Um, it's not until you get to the classical era. And and then the the, the period in um, northern Egypt, in, in what's called Lower Egypt, um, around from 200 BC to 2300 AD, you had the Greek philosophers, you had the Babylonians, you had everyone. It, it was a melting pot. Mm-hmm. And the ideas went back and forward and back and forward. And that's the point where you started to see the separation because magic wasn't inherent in the Greek religions. It wasn't inherent within the Semitic religions that were there. And you had the Hellenized Jews. So you had um, this Semitic culture in Alexandria that was polytheistic, but also Abrahamic. So there's a mm. lot of experimentation going on. And part of that as, that, as the Abrahamic pattern grew out of that, this separation between the religion and the magic became this this wide gap because it was also no longer, um, especially in Egypt, it was just for Egypt. That was their land, that was their universe, and this is how they worked within their universe and how they communicated with it. Um, so it's pretty unique in, in is that culture in, in the way it was structured simply because of its geographical location and the bounty that came with that. They had lots of time to experiment because they didn't go through, they didn't have to do very heavy agriculture. It was all done for them by the river. I they see. Would come every, every year and it would replenish the land so they didn't have to move like the Sumerians did. Right, okay, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, so you've got this very easy going, the um, climate was great, it didn't have any extremes, and this replenished land. So all they had to do was throw a load of seeds around. You know, as the water was thrown, sure. throw the animals on. The animals will, you know, get it into the ground. Whoop, seeds come up, turn into wheat. Sure. So that gave the people time, and the priesthoods in particular, time to think and to ponder and to experiment. And so you've got this huge body of three and a half thousand years at least of conscious engagement with the environment around them in a form of magic. So when you're needing to teach people, it's a really solid base that they can experience something through. And it's getting the, the, the big problem I'm coming up against now, which I hadn't thought of when I wrote it, was, and I do explain why I'm using Egyptian stuff, I explain it in the course, but still people are going, well, okay, we've learned this Egyptian magic, but what about everything else? And it's like, no, you didn't learn Egyptian magic. What you learned was magical techniques using an Egyptian pattern. You take those, you you turn to one side and you plonk it down somewhere else and it has gates and doorways in it which will enable you to talk to the powers in that land. And, you know, it's it's taken a while for people to get that because since, I mean, it, part of it goes way back in Christianity, but, you know, the, the 19th century did a lot of this um, yes, no, black, white. It has to be very this or that. There was no nuancing in any of the thinking. So if you learned an, a, a ritual that has Egyptian deities in it, it's got to be Egyptian. It's I like, see no, it, 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 we're talking to Egyptian deities and we're using some of the mythos, but the techniques can pick up and go somewhere else. And it's and, stable, and, so it's not dangerous, basically. Yeah. And and your the, that reference you made there is, I mean, Golden Dawn, 
and presumably you mean Golden Dawn systems and, and based and forward, right? Mm. When, yeah. it, when, you, when it was a particular pantheon. Yeah, they, they've used some Egyptian stuff, but they also mixed it very heavily in with Christianity as well. And yeah. modern day magicians will say, oh, no, there's no Christianity in the Golden Dawn. It's like, are you blind? Really? How do you? Yeah. Right. Isn't it, yeah. <laughs> is it is it possible to read Eliphas Levy and and not notice like the the yeah. heavy Christian yeah, with Catholic priest to start with? I mean, come on. <laughs> well, there's that, but um, I want you. There are a couple of things I wanted to follow up on sure. with that, though. So you had mentioned that the Egyptians had this leisure time; they were yeah. able to do their yeah. experimentation. But you've also said that the magic has to do with a communion with your surroundings. Mm -hmm. And I'm, by the way, I'm thinking of the the book. I forget which book of yours it is, but you mention about go around and go meet all the fairies in in your house, the the house mm -hmm. spirits. I think you call them. I love using the word fairy, but mm -hmm. um, and I'm now putting together. I'm like, well, this has been your childhood. Like that was. Mm -hmm. I'm see. I'm getting this great depth up to this, but my point was going to be, you had said the Semitic uh, cultures, tribes had not been able to to do that. But I would kind of figure you have no choice but to have some communion when you are an agrarian society, wouldn't you? Yes, it's again, it's it's a bit more complex than the answer i mean you know in, in semitic cultures at that particular time there was a lot of experimentation that was going okay. on um what you ended up with was the hellenized jews on the outside of jerusalem and they were living in egypt and they were living in what's now israel palestine Mm -hmm. They were up in the hills and everything else, and the, oh, no, there's only one God, and, you know, what we now see as Judaism, we're actually in the city, in Jerusalem. Um, and, of course, you've talked things, but, you know, and, and this is the difficulty of religion and history, is that once religion decides to take a particular path, it will wipe or try to wipe certain yes. parts of its history away that doesn't fit. So you have to go through quite a lot of digging to find these these little little bits. But yes, they will have done, but not to the extent that they did in Egypt and not with the okay. length of time and stability. And when people look at Egyptian deities, they don't see it because they're, they're looking at it from an Abrahamic perspective because our culture, even if... You say you say, I'm not a Christian, I've never been a Christian. You live in a culture that grew out yeah. of Christianity, so it affects how you perceive the world. So like Hathor, the goddess Hathor, because she's often seen with a child, everyone goes, oh, Mary and child. You know, oh, gosh. I'm the best child sort of thing. Wow. But what she is is not a person. It's, it's a power that is female. It's a power that's gentle, nourishing, and is also a house. The hat whore means house of Horus. Mm. She's, she's the enclosure that keeps the child Horus safe. So she's his house. I see. Oh, yeah. She also appears as a cow. Because cows also have that same protective, but you you go near a calf, you know, if there's cows in the field and they've got their calves with them, and you're walking a dog, you you're going to get killed basically, and it happens every year. I didn't year. know that. Oh yeah, we wow. get every year with tourists because it's mainly either wild moorland or um, animal farming. So we have sheep out in fields, we have cows out in fields, and every so often there's some idiot come down to the country for the weekend with their dog and they want mm -hmm. to go walk through the fields. You know, they choose a field that's got cows in it, like you do. Like you do. Uh, you know, and the cows come over and stampede and surround the human and the dog and kick them to death. Oh, my gosh. Cows can be really dangerous. 
and people don't because it's not it's not in everyday life anymore and no she, she becomes Sekhmet who is the lioness who tears people apart that it's a two-sided goddess she's the yeah. creation she's that power that female power that can create because they have a uterus and she's the power that can also destroy and so it's not a oh this is a god called Hathor because that's her name and she dresses in blue and you know she lives up there and her daddy's whatever and it's they didn't see it like that they so if a cow appeared out of the rushes they would immediately greetings Hathor and wow have I intruded on your space? She was also a sycamore tree because the sycamore tree gave shelter. Mm -hmm. Some. And so, and, and that's how they, they had all these different layers of understanding of the, it was very pragmatic and very flexible culture. And you see it in the use of the sacred language, which is hieroglyphs, which is not what they'd use in everyday life. But the hieroglyphs have all these different layers of meaning to them. And depending on whether you were just a basic scribe, you would get a basic understanding. If you were a priest magician, you would get three different layers of understanding from the same sentence. So complexity, but it's all about nature. Every one of mm -hmm. the Egyptian deities is something out of nature. The hippopotamus you find in the river, the river itself the earth beneath your feet, the wind, the moisture in the wind, the mountain, the cobra that lives in the mountain cave, you know, the underworld, yeah. the actual cave itself is considered a goddess. I see. Do, do you see what I mean? Whereas if you go to the Babylonian, it's more of, well, this is the power of the north wind, this is the power of the south wind, this is the power of the storm. So it's half and half. Okay. Yeah. Uh, whereas the Greeks, because the Greeks came, everyone thinks, oh, well, magic started with the Greeks. It's like, no. <laughs> the Greeks came along a lot later. You know, I don't even know that I've ever heard anybody say that. <laughs> well, because nobody ever fucking reads. No, that's a good point. They'll, they'll watch a, a podcast point. on on YouTube about history, which is usually done by a complete moron who knows nothing about history. And it's all the aliens, you know, the pyramids. Well, yeah. you know, <laughs> true. true. Uh, uh, I do. Do you know, though, this this is a great segue because I would, the other thread that I wanted to follow up on was leisure time. We have ridiculous amount of leisure yeah, time yeah. And we do for today, home. but yeah. we are very far divorced. Yeah, yeah. From everything, yeah. from yeah. all of nature. Yeah. And uh, and that's why you get such closed mentality, not only in magic, but in society in general, um, because there's no experience of what actual nature is like. And that comes into the gender thing. You know, yeah. having a huge variety on the scale in gender is normal. It's part of nature. I mean, that's the sure. genetic pictures of it. And yeah. throughout the ancient world, and, you know, right until the fucking English trampled all over India, they had it, you know, up to the 16, 1700s. There's fragments of it today, but the posher part of society looks down on it because without realising they're trying to ape the English overlord mentality they've sort of taken mm -hmm. that subconsciously but yeah you you know you would get uh men women women men someone who's neither you know sure. someone who's all it, it 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 was and there was a place for them in society there was the place for them in the temple it it, it wouldn't even occur that there wouldn't be a place because it's like saying well there's no place for women It'd be like the Taliban, right. you know, and the, you right. didn't get that in the ancient world because that would be stupid, right? You, you'd cut off like half your your resources, whatever percentage. But because you had you said it was in you said in the nineteenth century, 
there was a lot of binary thought, but we're seeing that like right now. I mean, you know, both in both in in the UK and here in the US, people just go, well, how could there possibly be something that's not man or woman? I mean, I'm curious what I'm curious, first of all, like how that became part of it. But go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, you know, Christianity is, is well, that whole back to that soup in Alexandria, you know, mm. it's always the thing that when, and I've seen this over and over again in history, someone comes up with a bright idea um, that's philosophical, religious, whatever, and it's an evolutionary step. And they go out and tell that they no world. Look, we have this evolutionary step. Don't be an asshole. It's amazing, <laughs> you know. So they go around and everyone's going, oh, this is so cool. Don't be an asshole. Wow, why didn't we think that? And, right. you know, and then you go to two, three generations ahead. Then you get to the people that are, well, you know, my, my granddad was really close to that person, so I can speak with authority. Sure. And that Don't be an asshole. Well, actually... That was more complicated than that. And it was, you know, if you had brown eyes, you were more of an asshole than that one was. <laughs> if you had green eyes, well, you're just a demon. Oh, you look at the history of the first few hundred years in Christianity and you can see how it got taken over by a series of people that what it appealed to is the type of people that have to box and label yeah. Yeah. And it has to have a clear border. And those sorts of people are drawn to new material that they can box and play with. And sure. they speak with authority. So everyone listens to them because most people at the time were illiterate. So here you've got a literate person. Wow. And they're, they're talking with authority and they knew him. Or they knew, sure. they knew him. So they must know what they're talking about. And you, you then see it start to emerge in the priesthoods of, you know, you have to turn around three times and tap your head before you can enter the sanctuary. And, you know, you have to wear a shirt that has six tassels, not five, because six is a more balanced number and five is evil. And right. so on it goes. And so on it goes. And, you know, you could only enter if you were a virgin below the age of 16, you know, that, that, had no markings upon her whatsoever and bloody blah, blah. It's like, right. oh, good grief. Really? You know, whereas in actual fact, like in the time of Jesus, um, homosexuality was normal. Uh, sure. Gender, gender fluidity was normal. Um, in fact, there was um, a priesthood right into Alexandria's time um, out in Siwa, which is an oasis in Egypt, right out in the middle of nowhere. And it, they were priests of an oracle. And they were all gay men. And some were gay really? men. Yeah. So some were gay men, women. And some were gay men, men. And, um, of course, when Alexander conquered Egypt, the first place he went to was Siwa. Because, it would make sense. Yeah, my friend <laughs> Greek. Yeah, my friends. Um, <laughs> <Right. laughs> I'm going to go see my friends. Um, <laughs> but also because the oracle, he got the oracle to say, "You are a king of Egypt." Okay. So then he was accepted by the people of Egypt, and if the guys at Siwa had said that, it must be true. Sure. Oh, I see. Yeah. I see. And I. I, I at the the center of power, of acceptance of power, came from a group of homosexual men and um, people of fluid gender, people who mm. in a men, you know, they were female in a male body, so they would be female. Yeah, like, you know, what's the big deal? And he found this. It, it, some of it was the Greeks. I mean, don't forget, Alexander was a Macedonian. They're a bit different. Right. I, I know. I, I said Greek and I meant Macedon. But yeah. So anybody who heard that just, I, I knew what I meant. Don't panic. It's okay. But there's an old <laughs> saying from that area of like, you know, 
a woman, um, I, will I get arrested or will you get arrested if I say something rude on here? Oh, certainly not. Are you kidding me? No, you've, oh, yeah, okay. you haven't heard many of these. But... Yeah, one of the, one of the <laughs> things from that area is a woman for breeding, a boy for pleasure and a melon for ecstasy. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Never heard that. Yeah. And uh, it was just. You know, and so everyone would go, oh, no, not in Jesus's time. They wouldn't have said things like that. And it's like, mm. oh, please. Like debauchery only came about in the 1960s. No. Yeah, yeah I know. That's it's, ridiculous. Yeah. You know, though, you because let's pull this forward. You one of the first things that you and I talked about was because I said, hey, you want to talk about the role of gender? And you said, yes, I do, because there are too many people who get brought into a circle and told you better strip down because this is the way magic works. You didn't put it like that. I'm making <laughs> that giving... happens. That's what happens. Why? What what's Dirty the deal? Dirty old men. I mean that's basically okay. a witch modern witchcraft started was, you know, a couple of guys, older guys who, you know, sure. Their grandparents were from the, the Victorian times, 1950s, 1940s, very uptight, even the 1930s. Really, really uptight. You couldn't go screwing around. It just wasn't, sure. you know, well, people did, but very rarely. And in the 1950s, it just wasn't a thing to do. Um, so, but you, you, you got the pagans around and you said to all the young girls with the nice big titties, is like, hey, of course you can be a pagan, but you know you have to take your clothes off. <laughs> and then when you want to be a high priestess, first you have to make love to the god of the forest, and I'll stand in for the god of the forest, and you'll sure. be the fairy queen, and I'll make love to you and put the forest into you. It's like, really? Wow. I think so. So... So this is not, it's funny because I'm looking at a question that I wrote down. Is what we see today a modern interpretation <laughs> or just chicanery? So fucking chicanery. I got it. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of stuff like that. And it's like where people don't have a, especially for women that don't have an expression to um, wear that's powerful or that's mm -hmm. sexual in its own power. Right. That the, you know, when you're young, you put on a clothing of who you admire, who you want to be. And then eventually that clothing melts so much into you and you come out of that clothing, it yourself as that person starts to emerge. Um, but I mean, I'm lucky I sort of grew up in the 60s and, and early 70s into the mid-70s, so it went from the flower power to the punk era, you know, and it, so it was great. It was like, yeah, get your dick out, let's see what you've got, you know. Sort of like, cut the crap, put it on the table, let's have a look. And, uh, so all these guys would just slide under sure. the in terror. Uh, right. You had whole bands named for that pro for that process, right? <laughs> the circle jerks, you know. Yeah, yeah. But the, for women, the, there was nothing like that, really. Um, and and the, particularly in the USA, you know, looking around the average USA, mm -hmm. there's, there's nothing for real strength for women. Um, no. The, in little corners maybe, but not in the mainstream and not in mainstream magic either. There's these gender patterns that people put into magic. And it's always the priestess or the seer who serves the magician, right? So there'll be the magician and his seer. Mm -hmm. Or there's the magician and his high priestess. Or his Lilith sure. is the other one. That was where I was going because Lilith, this, which is hugely taken up, by women in, in magical culture is seen as this primal female who wanted to be on top in sex and, and Adam got scared and, you know, so she fucked off and left him. Um, sure. And, uh, you know, she she's this independent, well, actually none of that existed. 
Lilith comes from the Lilithu, which was uh, or is a hive consciousness beings that flow with the wind in the Middle and Near East, mm. and they bring death on the wind. So the Lilithu, the Lilithu go for the old and the very young, and it's like a cleaning process. The, the, the winds come, you know, it's whenever you get something like that, you look at what direction does it come out of because it'll tell you a lot about the land. You know, if it, it's coming from the south, it's heat, too much heat. If death comes from the south, if it comes from the north, it's too much cold. And so the death winds, they were called the Lilithu, and that you could hear them screaming and they'd bring death with them. And, wow. and, you know, they, they'd be spells to protect the babies from the Lilithu. And then over time, it got to be, I, you know, I, I wasn't fantasizing and masturbating and, and sort of splat all over the bed um, <laughs> because I'm dreaming of someone other than you, darling. It was the Lilith that did it to me. She forced me. Oh and my gosh. That came this mythos that eventually became the naughty Lilith who's in black leather and everything else. But it's sure. still a male fantasy. It's a male sexual fantasy. So it's still a male thing. And they don't know what you mean. They're just playing into a role that you're trying to get away from. And when you put up a powerful right. female role, it terrifies them as well as the men. And it's like, you know, this power is a female power. But, but women don't do that. Actually, women do. Women have that power. Goddesses have that power. They have the power to bring life. and They have the power to bring death. And as a lot of guys will tell you in the Middle East, especially Turkish guys, is like, you know, a man loses his temper and starts fighting with you. A woman loses her rag with you badly enough. She will go for blood until you're dead. She will hack away at you until there's nothing left at you. So don't wow. piss off the woman. Piss off yeah. Her. But don't argue with the woman when she's mature and she's got her full power because God help you. So I feel like... <laughs> <laughs> Not so gentle, you know. Oh, absolutely. But I, I feel like there's much of... Much of what I've learned, and maybe just this is just my uh, idiosyncrasy, but I feel, and actually now that I'm thinking about it, I wonder if this is just because that's how I, I'm not sure what the word I want to use here is, because mm. what I've always seen was the goddess who is great and terrible. I, yeah. I guess kind of like Oz, only mm. not, you know, Oz, but who is beautiful and terrible. And that has always made sense. The, she brings life, she brings death. Hmm. And I mean, you look at, um, you know, if you look at, at Hindu goddesses, that's hmm. exactly, Kali. Kali is the the great, you know, yep. example of that. Beautiful and terrible. Yep. And Kabili, you know, she was the same goddess of the land and the animals, of life and creation yep. and of destruction, plague, disease and death. She was all of them. She was an undivided um, deity. And again, you see it, Hathor, Hathor, and Sechmet, who is the strength, who is the lioness, who gets so bloodthirsty, they have to get drunk to stop a killing. Yeah. You don't get that in the male, in the male pantheon, you know, because it's the female at the end of the day. And it's since Christianity came in, and quite early on in Christianity, you know, like a guy who'd never met Jesus, never had out to do with the apostles, was a Greek. He worked for the Romans as a tax collector and was a total dick. Told people that God told him he was going to start the whole thing. And he, he sure. was the one who would take it. So everyone went, oh, OK. You know, he and he was the guy that's like, women, get out. Be quiet. Women need to be quiet. He's like, oh, fuck off. I see. And from there, you've got the whole women are delicate and they're, you know. Sure, sure. And if you think about it, like, you know, a man that's transitioned into a woman or a woman that's transitioned into a man has all of that. 
all wrapped in together. You're a complete power. You're not a subdivided power. Magically, that is really, really interesting. And how you navigate through magic with that is that's something that will be very individual for each person, but fascinating to know how that develops over decades in the power of that person. So. This ended up being the reason why we started talking, right? I mean, because I felt when I started any kind of magical stuff, so this would have been about 2000, it was like 2013. So certainly not as long as, well, I mean, this goes much farther yeah. back. But when I was really trying, when I was really serious about trying to be, you know, a connection to the spiritual, I, everything I do was very, I thought of myself as very, um, you know, for lack of a better way of saying it, very directing mm. it's all the gold, all the golden dawn stuff, right? We're going to, we're going to, um, all the ceremonial magic, I should say, mm. we're going to summon a, summon a demon or summon an angel. And then we're going to tell them what to do. You, you go and do this, right? <laughs> Cause I'm the, I'm the magician here. You're yeah. just the yeah. power. So, yeah. and I, I don't, I mean, I don't think I've precisely did that, but I would say much of the way that I thought of myself in relation to communion with nature was along those sort of directing and activating kind of ways. And then as I started to transition gender, I, I mean, it was, and it took months, but when I started trying to, trying to, to get back into the flow of, of magic, it just didn't, it didn't feel right mm. because I felt my role needed to be more receiving and nurturing and, and completing, not initiating, but completing. But, but to your point, I agree wholeheartedly. I think if you can manipulate both directions, you didn't really say it like that, but <laughs> it was close enough. That is a complete Mm. It's the complete thing. You I, you can gather. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say because you, you, it's not something you would need to do intentionally. Like, mm -mm. oh, I'm going to I'm going to be destructive or anything like that. It's just being aware of how the power is flowing, and how it's yes. shifting and shifting with it. It's like you know. There was this great argument in Britain in a magical community not too long ago about what is a woman, which was to do with gender transition. And I sure I just could not believe that I was actually seeing this in the 21st century. It's like, are you shitting me? Mm. So I'm, I'm watching this going on. And there were uh, and and I was at Magical Women's Conference, the first one. I said, Are, are you saying that uh trans women are not welcome, or that they're not women. Sure. And what she said was, well, they're not human women. So I'm like, what are they? Are they like elephant women? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? You know, it, just, it, it was going down that road of like, how fucking stupid could you get? And she said, well, you're not like a woman has a uterus. It's like, I don't. Right. So am I no longer a woman? You know, it goes with my hairy legs. I've got very, very, very <laughs> long legs. So right. Now I can grow a pair of balls, which yes. my husband would actually argue that I already had. So, <laughs> <laughs> I guess with your mother, right? So you, it came through your mother, right? You inherited that. It's like, oh, good, great. You know, yeah. So it, it's it's an excellent point, though. I mean, you know, we we are focusing. I mean, I. Just this morning, I had somebody on, on a comment on a YouTube video that says, yeah, you know, you'll never be a woman because you'll never have a uterus. And I think, but I, I mean, I know several yeah, yeah. women who have never been able to bear children. I mean, like this is common yeah. these days. It's not like it's it's a brand spanking new. Yeah. So I don't know. But, and but I will say this. It changes it dramatically when your uterus is taken away. 
Oh, does it? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. This is okay. one of the important things that I wanted to talk about to do with magic is there is very little gender in magic, but where it does come up is usually to do with the um, the physical organs of what mm, those physical yeah. organs are doing, regardless of the sexuality of the person. Like you can bring, I used to bring power in through my uterus and I didn't realise for the longest time that's what I was doing. But that's sure. how I would cook the magic is in my uterus. Really? And so when I had a hysterectomy and the guy, the surgeon came back, he said, how many children do you have? And I said, two. He said, are you sure? And I'm like, I don't, <laughs> I don't think I hid any under the bed. Yeah. I think You'd it, probably know. Notice. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. he said, no uterus is so big. It looks like you've had at least 15 children. And it's like. Wow. Why? He said, I don't know. I've never seen that. Yeah. So, but what it's done, and it, it took me about, oh, God, a year or so to really figure the difference. And huh. um, I was getting hit a lot more by the magic, you know, as I was bringing mm -hmm. stuff through to send it out. It was hitting me like a fucking wall. Interesting. Um, it, it was hard and fast. And it was like, can you, can you guys, like, help me with this? You know, and back it up a bit. And they're like, you're going to have to learn fast because you've got work to do now. Come on, pull your shit together. And I'm like, I'm sure. trying. I just don't know what you want me to do. So, but I feel, for, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I, I feel like that was kind of what happened to me because I start, I'm, it scared the bejesus out of me. But yeah. I didn't, I wish I hadn't put it like that. I was very frightened when it struck me that now I have the ability to take all this in. Yeah. And then, you know, do do something with it. And and uh, you said you, you took it in through your uterus. Mine is right behind my breastbone. Right. When, um, when we, when I started doing the inner flame meditations. Yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, I know exactly what this is. Because I was like, it's right there. It's in, hopefully my bra's not showing there. Um, <laughs> well, it's a bit low cut. But Having boobs will change that. Right. You know. So, but when I started doing that, I went, oh, this makes total sense. Because it's just that little, that little part that goes, I don't know how to, that's the technical word for it, everybody. I'm sorry. This is when you have two people who have... Who know the technical magical words? Yeah. Whoa, that's all you have to. yeah, but but that's and it made perfect sense. So, but but when I realized I could do, I couldn't do that before I started transition. Mm. And this was the part I guess I never told you was that I I realized there was um rather than trying. Ooh, I've never articulated this, so you'll have to cut me a little slack. Yeah. Rather than trying to to gather something rather than try to gather the energy i realized i could flow it through myself yeah yeah i think that's yeah. a good way to put it yeah and it was such it was scary so scary i'm i'm used to it now yeah but it took you know many months it was in fact honestly it was like january it was yeah. like january of 2024 that i'm like Oh, this isn't a problem. It's just, oh, okay, I'm okay with this. But yeah, that was those were the major changes that I had. Where it just, I felt like I had to go and like get buckets of magic or something. I'd, yeah. I'll carry something over through the other world and I'll pour it into a cauldron or something, and then just okay, get the fuck out of you. Yeah, because what I was doing magically a lot of the time was creating and construction. You know, that's that was my main thing. Um, yes. Okay. But creation and construction, so um, that goes through the uterus. Mm. Oh my gosh! It would. Yeah, yes. Okay. Creating something, and so it has yeah. to go through a process. Whereas yeah. with the breasts, you're nourishing something, so it comes. It's immediate. It come. It needs to come straight through you and into whatever it is you're working. I because you're nourishing it, you have the ability. Oh, I, I see. Yeah, which I couldn't. I couldn't breastfeed. I never got proper female boobs. I just had man boobs. Sorry, I'm a little 
It's all right. Uh, wow. Well. <laughs> but that is no, it... what you're doing. And that's what you're doing wow. in these shows is you're nourishing. So the power comes straight through and your boobs will get bigger because the milk, when a child breastfeeds, it puts in an order for the next meal. So if it feeds for a long time, the breasts will be fuller the next time round, which is something magically you're going to have to keep an eye on, is if you're nourishing a being or the land or a deity or anything, is don't try and empty too much because it will order even more and you can end up losing a lot of weight. Well, that's that's what I do. Um, maybe I kind of wish we hadn't talked about this on a, while well, record was going, but. This is good I, because yep. you're not, you know, the, so many magicians who need to hear this. It, it That explained it so perfectly because it was really, yeah, I, I mean, before what I had to do, literally, because I would, in mm. visualizations, I had a bucket a cauldron mm. and behind me a little pond. Mm. And the only thing that I could do, I could turn around, I could get some water, I could put it in my cauldron, spark a fire. And then when it had gone a certain amount of time, and it was not really clear when that was going to be, it was okay, go out into the world. That was the way I did anything that, that was like worth a damn, I guess. I think I'm just. Anyway, but but now it's like I don't – yeah, now it's – and this was something – wow, I could finish a sentence. Pull yourself together, Amy. <laughs> um, Need to ramble with, so you can have a deep breath. <laughs> it's probably a good idea. With some of the concepts that I've learned through Quoria, it's like – I mean, in particular, the 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 inner flame, the yeah. idea of the the column, mm -hmm. you know, the, the infinite column up and down. That has changed so many things for me because oh, my voice is still wavering. Um, because I just become like a conduit. Yes, I've, I've gone from I've oh. gone from being. I've gone from being like a switch to a fuse. I'm not sure. <laughs> That's probably not a good way to put it, but yeah. I'm not an electrician apparently, but <laughs> it's, <clears throat> oh boy. I'm going to have to sit and think about this for a long time. Yeah. And also, you know, magically over the next two or three years, keep that in mind. Because there's pitfalls with it, as well mm -hmm. as gifts with it. You know, um, certain types of beings will take and take and take. Um, a lot of them won't, but it's like there's always that one child who will want to carry on breastfeeding and they're like five and it's like dudes. You know, to, <laughs> really? You know, maybe you want to wean them a bit, you know? So... <laughs> Do you know, though, something else just occurred to me. The My ability to protect myself has gotten better, too. Oh, yeah. Well, and, and now that makes, uh, right, yeah, that makes total and, sense. And protection, because you're a nerd. Mm. Huh. Yeah. All right, should we just cut it short here? And I thought we think we're... <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> we, we had a, there were ahead a ton of like questions that I hope we're gonna hoped we're gonna dance around this, but but yeah, that ended up here. Let me explain exactly what's been wrong with you for the net the past year. Yeah, um, I guess it's not wrong, but no, it's not. Um, it's it's not, what's, and it goes back to Hato. You know, when you when you look at different pictures depictions of the power of Hato. One of them is, and it, there's a variety of different goddesses shown in the same sort of picture, is pouring water out of the mm. sycamore tree to someone underneath who's parched. So there's that nourishment. Mm. Um, 
that's that's the breast and the hat or the house of horus is the uterus so you know th there's all these different things that go along with the body um that are nothing to do with a person's sexual preferences sure or, or, or lack of um it is purely about what organ do you have so like a guy who has had his testicles removed will have um, a completely different magical experience. And it, it takes a while for that understanding to grow because suddenly they find that what they were doing doesn't have the same power. It doesn't have that power anymore. And yeah, not recognize what the new power is. So sometimes you'll see them flailing around and and trying to keep going with what they did before. Yes, um, right. And the the other thing that I learned, and I don't know if it's going to be any use for you, is that you know when my uterus was taken out, and I realised you know that I'd been processing all of my magic through my uterus. Um, what was it going to process through now? And it was like. I don't know how this is going to work. And because I'd taken a couple of years out so that my body could recover because it was quite a big surgery. Um, so when I come to start writing the course, because I'd, I'd written a couple of books and then I thought, right, we'll get cracking with the course. That hit me like a fucking wall doing that work. And yeah. it was like I couldn't focus on what part of my body was processing that work. And it's because it was the whole body that was processing that work. It's like my body, my body thought it was female, you know, and I'd been given hormones because, you know, the mind had crashed out completely and the uplift that you're supposed to get naturally didn't happen. Um, so I, it, my immune system crashed. Everything started crashing. And I was like, I can't, I can't do this. They were like, yes, you can. Stop being pathetic. <laughs> so it's like, oh, thanks, that's really helpful. And they were like, no, no, just, just keep going. And so that first year was hell because I started getting shingles. And I got huh. all the time and got them everywhere all the time. And it was like, oh, for fuck's sake, and do you want me to carry on writing this? They were like, yeah, don't be such a wasp. And I'm like, have you ever had fucking shingles 24-7 for two years? Fuck you. No. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's protecting you from, from worse things. Huh. It's a barrier. It's an armour. And it's a, it's a, a, a balancer. And I still haven't figured out against what, but it's right. If I take too much antiviral, because I have to be on them all the time, if I take too much antiviral, I start to feel really ill. And it's not the drug. It's something else. And I don't know if it's magical or not. But, yeah, yeah. it's a weird situation that goes on with that. And it's somehow wrapped up with the magic and not having a uterus. It's like the whole, because your immune system is throughout the whole body. Yeah, to choose to come through, filter through that. So now, for you, I I no idea how that's going to work. But I'm guessing that because I had stuff taken away, you've had stuff added. You might well, find not yet. Actually, that's that's the direction that it's going in. in oh, oh, I see what you're saying. True. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so you will go through a process of finding that you might have various different ways of processing power yeah. in different ways. It's an adventure, which is it why is. anyone going through transition who's a magician needs to keep really close journal notes so that, you know, when you're in your 70s and there's a youngster going through it who's a magician, you can say, right, these are the things. Don't make the same mistakes I made. Make your own. Here the, here's the mistakes I made, which is what I do, because I've blown myself up so many times, and I'll tell people how I did it so that they don't go along and do it as well and, and gets rid of this idea that everyone's an expert because we're not. 
We're all right. stumbling through the dark in whatever we do, especially in something yeah. like this. So, um, yeah, you can keep, keep a diary. Keep a really strong magical diary. Yeah, unfortunately, I, don't, I really don't. I, uh, and but I don't. Every time you did. <laughs> All right, I'll get out. I'll get on it. But yeah, get on with it. It was, but but there was so this is a weak excuse. Forgive my weak excuse. But remember, this was very frightening to me. It was frightening, and that's why I reached out to you. Yeah, yeah. Because for what it's worth, I got sort of something similar where it was like, I really can't do this, and yeah. messages that were like sucks to be you then doesn't it because because it's going to keep going and it's like no i mean really like cannot do this and it's, yep. yeah it really does suck to be you then definitely and it's yeah. in more ways than one who knew so i never got immune system there was nothing with the immune system or, or you know shingles rashes whatever um but but my mental health you know, when, when my mental health goes down, it's not, you know, oh, I feel a little down today. It's like, <sighs> all right, it's time to go out and decapitate myself kind of thing. You know, it's like really far down, yeah. whacked out to just go, hey, what the, where'd that yeah. come from? I think I should. So. Now, that is another interesting thing in terms of magic and gender. Um. When magic hits someone destructively, you know, when it's too much, which can mm -hmm. happen, you know, if the fuses, the methods that you're using, those are your fuses. And the circuits, if if they're not right and you end up getting, doing something stupid and getting an overload or an attack or anything like that, for women, it tends to affect their bodies. Like I've had dislocated shoulders I've had all sorts of physical stuff from magical impacts. Like my body will treat it as though it is a physical impact. For men, wow. in general, it tends to affect the mental health. Now, because you're going from male to female, it, you know, and, and the body's going to be going through transitioning, you might find that that deep depression, when that happens, starts becoming a lot less deep, a lot less deep, a lot less deep, and maybe you get eczema instead. Or maybe you get a sore foot instead. Or <laughs> maybe you get, do you know what I mean? It, it, it does, yeah. I don't know whether it's chemically to do with the endocrine system and how magic hits the endocrine system, um, but it, it really does become a very physical thing for a lot of women i mean it's not all women some women go through the whole depression stuff as well when they're impacted um but for most men it does tend to be mental health for women it does tend to be physical health so you'll find that transition as well as to how your impact is affected how your downtimes are affected yeah um I, I'm the same, again, with the uterus and the hormones and stuff. In my teens and 20s, I used to be very much like that. And, you know, I had two little kids, so I couldn't go out and decapitate myself. And, you know, there's a couple of times I found myself out wandering the streets at 3 o'clock in the morning in my dressing gown and slippers going, I can't do this. I just, I, I just can't do this. And it was postnatal depression that had not been picked mm. up. Um. And in those days, you just had to keep going because there was just no help. Um, and it used to be, you know, when I'd go, I'd really go down in, in the deeps. Um, but magically, slowly, that started to lift it, and I started to get more physical things. I started with eczema. And the yeah. deep got a lot less deep, and it would come out physically. And then I went to see a homeopath in my early 30s and she picked up that this was happening and that the magical dynamic and everything and she gave me this one little remedy and I'm thinking what a lot of shit this is such a lot of shit and two days later I just came out from head to toe in a rash that stayed for okay. six, six months of it and it's like are you shitting me 
And she's like, better out than in. <laughs> you know, it's doing something, just go with it. And it was amazing. You know, it, it the treatments really changed how my body handled magic, how hmm. I handled the power, all of that sort of thing. And that's why I decided I need to learn this. I really need yeah. to. Learn. And we had this deal. Um, she wanted to learn tarot and divination. Yeah. So, I, you know, she taught me and I taught her. It was great. But, yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I again, heard you got a book about it. <laughs> You've got to really, um, as you go through the experiences, because really, you know, women of your generation that are going through this are like the first ones. Really, especially in magic, where it's where it's open, yeah. you know, and there oh, is a, a bit of responsibility that goes with that of keeping oh, a record of it. All right, I'll have to do better. Yeah, you've got to be can grandma. You see, in seventy five, <laughs> you've got to be the grandma who can sit there and go, "Oh, don't worry about it. It will be fine. <laughs> what you worry about is this. Oh God, you have no idea what's coming." You know. You know, it's fun. that was like third, probably 90 percent of what I've gotten from the transgender community. You get into it and they go, oh, yeah, everything is going to go to shit. Just count on count on this being the worst experience of your life until suddenly it's the best. Yeah. And it was the opposite for me. I was like, God, uh -huh. everything's great. I don't know what these stupid people were talking about. They're really dumb. And then it was really terrible. And oh. now I'm back to really great. Really so, yeah, I mean, maybe maybe I've built up some of the. Yeah protection but i don't know what an adventure there wow oh it really is i mean i i don't i can't imagine anybody wanting to restrict somebody from doing this just I because know. it's like well i, I don't let's I, just see what happens yeah <clears throat> I, I i if nothing I else really don't get this whole mentality of you know it's like over here they're all screaming about toilets it's like, really? <laughs> right. You know, the whole of Europe has unisex toilets. Suddenly it's going to be a problem because that guy's wearing a skirt and he's actually a woman now. Really? I mean, I was <laughs> telling my husband um, back in the 90s, and I used to do a lot of work in New York. I'd go into Manhattan and I'd do readings for like three days, mm. um, especially with the finance community and stuff like that, and do wow. uh, magical teaching on the weekends. And uh, a place that I like to go to was Lucky Chen's in Manhattan, okay. which is, um, it was like a, a Thai restaurant, which was great food, but all of the staff were transgendered women. Were katoi, sure. Yeah. And, That's uh, great. They were great. And like, you know, I'd be, I'd be going to the, the bathroom, the ladies' bathroom, and there'd be two or three in there doing the makeup, getting ready for work and stuff like that. It was great. And, you know, it was far more fun than some restaurants you go into and you've got, like, two middle-aged bitchy women stood there. It's like, for fuck's sake, you're alive. Be happy. Yes. You're fucking right. alive. Get over it, you know. But, yeah, I, I used to love going in there because it was just fun. I and bet. staff were great. You know, they, they made sure. the meal a good and interesting experience because they'd come over and go, oh, well, do you know where that's from? Oh, it's like this and da 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 Really? Very, very chatty. Oh, cool. You know, yeah. and I didn't realise, actually, that they, that they weren't born as women until, like, my third visit. And it's like, hang on a minute. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> and right. I, it was really exciting because I've always seen myself from being a kid as being like a, a man girl. You know, I'm sort of, I don't know, I, I don't have a word for it and because I'm not involved in the community. I don't know the, the terminology, but it's almost like being a man in a woman's body, but not. A lesbian, if you see what I mean. Oh, but gender and gender and sexuality. <laughs> yeah, totally different. Yeah, 
Did but I was always one of the right. boys. Like I played out with the boys. I dressed as like a boy. I, I didn't want to do the girly stuff. I've never wanted to do the girly shit. I'm in in my marriage. I'm the one that fixes the washer, and fixes the car, and all that sort of thing. You know, I do all the blue jobs. <laughs> Needs all. Yeah, people. yeah. It's perfect. <laughs> my my wife's the one who gets all the spiders and throws them out. You know. Or puts them out of the house. You don't like spiders. No. No, I get... No, I'll be... It's so cool. But yeah, I know where you are, that sometimes it can get a wee bit dangerous. Yeah, well, I mean, we only have black widows out here. There's no brown recluse. Where I grew up in California, yeah, there were some things that it's like, don't watch out for those guys. Oh, But I yeah, I mean, we'll just little cheesy things will be walking up the wall and be like, I'm leaving the room. You take care of it. And my wife's like, okay. <laughs> you are the biggest. I've joked about that for the, our whole relationship that I have always been the wife of the relationship. Right. I've always been the one to remember, you know, for the longest time, April 20th would come around and I'd say, Hey, do you know what today is? My wife would go, yeah, it's like Friday. No, no, this was our first date. And, Oh, oh, oh. Why do you remember this? And I'm like, because it was important. Because we was our first date. And do you remember we went to an Italian restaurant? And and it was really good. My wife's like, no. you're the weirdest. <laughs> what the hell? Why are you so sentimental? Oh, God. Because I told you on our first date, I'm really a girl. And, oh. Yeah. Oh. So, um, let me go ahead. Let me okay. go ahead and, and, and shut down the recording. Um, I, you know, you saw me. I was stuttering when you first came onto the screen. I'm still fangirling a little bit. I, thank you so much. See, now I can't even finish a sentence again. Oh, go. Thank you so much for <laughs> what? <laughs> we need to do this more often so you get it out your system so we can be normal girls having a conversation. Can we? Because I would love, love to talk to you. I feel like I've been talking to like a sister of mine. For, yeah. Talk to my sisters like this, actually, is maybe the better way to put it. Oh. I hope there's not a sister out there who watches this, but I'm probably sure that it won't happen. But um, anyway, just it's meant so much to me to be able to talk to you in person and, and all of our correspondence. I don't know why you responded to me in particular, but just thank you for doing so and um, for everything you've done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then to our listeners, um, th you know, thanks to all of our listeners. This has been Gender Identity Weekly. I'm Amethyst Deharic speaking with jo Josephine McCarthy about magic and gender and sex. Oh, shoot. I had like a funny bit that you uh, usually I try to come up with a funny bit and there was a funny bit that went out of my head entirely. I don't even know what it was. So I will just say uh, magic, magic and gender and that funny bit that I forgot. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you for asking me. This was really good fun.